and welcome. Um, I'm Rebecca, I work at the gallery here. We're very, very lucky to have Kirsten from Fortius um, uh, today. Um, Kirsten will be talking for about 30 minutes and we'll open up the floor for some questions. So if you've got a burning question about how to hang something, that's the time. Um, Kirsten's near 20 years um, in the installation industry, so we're very lucky to have some great advice. Without further ado, Kirsten. Thank you. Thank you for all for coming. Um, do let me know if I'm whispering or shouting or can't see me or anything. Um, I, every professional installer has their own little tips and tricks and methods and no doubt some of you do too so what I'm about to say is just the way we work and there's nothing kind of um, wrong with having your own methods um, and I'm always open to learning new tricks so if anyone's got any little um, ways they do things then let me know. Um, Hopefully I can answer any questions you've got, but I always say my colleague Murray is the brains, I'm the brawn, so um, he's the one who has to do all the maths, which has never my, been my strong suit, and there's a lot of it in what we do. Um, so feel free to ask questions. I haven't actually timed myself doing this, so if I start to um, drone on, just shout at me from the back or something. Um, common things that we're told by clients when we go to their, particularly in private homes, is my husband and I'd be divorced if we did this. Um, you know, they just don't, they don't agree or they, you know, just fight over how high or something. Um, or they'll say, you know, behind that picture that we try to do ourselves are eight holes and um, <laughs> we've just renovated and uh, they, uh, they just don't want to sort of put any more damage in the walls than they have to. So uh, that's often when we're called in. Um, we, <laughs> we had one client who waited 15 years for her husband to hang a heavy mirror in her bathroom <laughs> and she gave up in the end and called us um, and to be fair to him it was very heavy and um, quite difficult so um, I did have some sympathy. Um, I mean obviously you're, you're very welcome to, to, to hang things yourself in your own home and um, especially if you happen to be, you have a good understanding on house construction, you know what sort of, how things are made, um, you've got a decent selection of tools, um, you know, sort of uh, understand the basics about weights. Um, I grew up, I probably straddle that generation of metric and imperial, so I sort of think of stone and pounds for weight and feet for people's height, but metres for length and things, but um, if you've got a good understanding on sort of basic uh, building construction, that's always handy. Um, and I mean, I've got a small selection of the tools we use in my tool belt, but um, also it can be helpful if you're not terribly OCD about precision if you're doing it yourself. Um, we once hung a whole selection of um, all the portraits of all the mayors of Auckland in the town hall, and we were told that John Banks was sort of very you know, OCD about precision and it was a concrete wall and of course when you drill into concrete the drill can move around a bit so it was a bit of a pressured situation to get it as precise as we could and that's the sort of thing that you know you may want to not want to tackle if you're um, in the sort of amateur side of things but um, the other thing it can pay to have a fairly robust relationship if you're going to do it yourself um, and we've uh, been witness to a few arguments in our time about um, things and, and half the benefit of actually having Murray and I there especially with a large piece, is that we can be the ones holding it while you can stand back and have a look. You know, it's very hard when the two of you are standing right here to get an overview of, of how something looks in your house. So um, there are benefits to, uh, to having an extra pair of hands around. Um, it can be worth considering using a professional if you've got something that's particularly valuable for a start or very fragile or very heavy um, or a bit unusual. Um, I don't know if any of you know Emily Sedell that does the lovely glass lays um, and they generally have a bracket that sticks out from the wall about 100 mil and with a dip in the end that the wire sits into. But the fact that it's sticking out that far from the wall means there's a lot of leverage going on if you just put something like that into jib. So, you know, if you've got something that's made of glass, obviously, so that's a worry in itself. Um, so something unusual like that, it can pay to have someone around who's got a bit of an experience or knows where to get the right hardware and things like that because we you know, can obviously buy from trade and that helps with getting access to some of the equipment that's not always available. Um, other things like, like with the mirror photographs, if the effect that you're after depends on 
precision that you've got 20 things to hang and they, they all need to have the same top line or bottom line or things like that then you know that's a bit a tough ask to do yourself so um, that may be worth having um, one of us around and we have laser levels for example um, we got very worried there for a while when they stopped stocking these at Mitre 10 and we managed to find some online and import two of them but you know you can get um, uh, vertical and horizontal I'm sorry it's probably a bit light in here to see we can just see the red line so if you're trying to get everything lined up having one of these is a lifesaver we live in fear of the day that you can't get them anymore um, if you also sort of aren't terribly confident about your choices and you just want some experience sort of objective um, advice then it can be good to have someone else there who's you know been around the traps for a while and hung a lot of different sorts of art um, but the thing with that is we don't know coming into your home what you're sentimentally attached to you know we might know what we like the look of on a certain wall or a certain place but you know you may have a particular painting you're very sentimentally attached to so it's always good to tell someone you know what your priorities are for hanging um, I thought I'd um, bring in a few things just to sort of illustrate a few points. Um, oh, the other situation that can be good to call on professionals, obviously, if you're hanging somewhere that's a bit tricky or dangerous, like a stairwell. Um, we sort of carry stair ladders and planks and things like that. My sister actually works for WorkSafe, and I do terrify her sometimes by sending photos of Murray poised over a stair void on a plank and things. But um, yeah, it can be tricky, but it pays to tell the professional in advance that you've got something that's a bit tricky or send photos or something just so we come equipped. But um, yeah, we do a few of those in our time. So one of the reasons that professionals can be good to use, thank you Michael Smither, is often when you buy a picture you'll be faced with a situation where you've got wire or string and string is a particularly good example like you know if you're going to stick a hole and a hook in the wall you'll you get a pivot you know the wind catches it or someone knocks it and you'll you have this situation so generally we don't use wire or string we'll chop it off and hook into the d-rings on the side um, string is particularly tricky because it stretches and if you've got 20 pictures you're trying to hang in a straight line the string will all be slightly different lengths it all won't be precise and so you can drive yourself crazy trying to um, get a good result if you do want to keep the wire and some some clients do um, it pays to try and hang with spread two hooks over the one so you get less of a pivot um, and that's also when a laser level comes in handy because you those two will be um, parallel and level and the other thing is a lot of framers don't worry too much of having the D-rings level because they don't have to do so much with string. So if you do chop the string off, you've probably got a tolerance of about two mil that something can be out of level before it shows on the wall. Um, otherwise, it pays to start again if it's not level and just put it in at precisely the same height on each side. And in this situation, see there's this rebate here, sorry. Um, you know, there's a rebate here and behind the frame. So instead of having the D-ring here where the hook is going to be hitting that bit of the frame and holding it out from the wall, we will move that D-ring in and angle it so that your hook is actually sitting into that rebate, which just pulls the painting back straighter onto the wall. Um, and the reason we, like we would have the hook, the D-rings on an angle a bit like that, so not straight across and not straight up. And the same with the hook on the wall be angled like that and what that allows you to do is often especially in New Zealand old villas and things are not level the, you know they've sunk or something else is going on and you'll, you'll have the worst case we had was a, an old villa where they it was very out of level they had a scotia at the top that wasn't straight and stripy wallpaper <laughs> so um, hanging things so your hooks are in an angle like this and your d-rings also allows you just to sway the picture gently to level so you can and it will stay that way whereas if you have your hooks straight up and down you've got nowhere to go it's pretty much has to stay the way it is so that's just a nice little technique we've developed that um, lets you deal with situations in houses where you've got no good level and, or, and especially when you're hanging a whole series of things and there might be a slight variation in the width of the frame or something and you just need to be able to gently move it a little bit. Um, what I thought I'd do is bring in a bit of jib actually that kind of shows what goes on with jib. Um, 
this is sort of a selection of hardware that we tend to use a lot of. These, um, I mean, D-rings, no great mystery to them. These are two of the sizes you can get, but obviously you can get ones with one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes for different weight things. Um, and you can get a lot thinner, um, skinnier versions for this for smaller frames. Um, some t the, the beauty of wooden frames, of course, is that you can move your fixing point up and down on the back. Whereas with a metal frame, we tend to roll our eyes about metal frames because you don't get a lot of play with where things are uh, fixed from. So we don't tend to like the little triangle D-rings because they've got quite a, a sharp point and to fit them over the tongue of a hook can be tricky, especially if it's um, something that's a bit tight. So um, we prefer the rounded ends, so sort of tend to be easier. Um, these nice big hooks here we are great for heavy things like mirrors um, and they have two holes obviously. Um, obviously if something's really heavy that just screws into jib is not going to be enough. But I thought what I'd do is turn around. We use a lot of 20 mil jib screws. They've got a wide thread as opposed to a fairly fine tight thread that you use for screwing into wood. So this top one is a 20 mil screw. And you see I've gone through just a little bit to the, through the jib. So it's not much point having a massively long screw if it's not going into timber at the back. It'll just stick out into nothing. So 20 mil is, is all you really need for something that's light enough to be just screwed directly into jib. This one's a 25 mil screw and you see it's just sitting there doing nothing really. Um, but those are a really good hook for something that's a bit too heavy just for a single fixing point. We, this, these are our sort of favourite hooks for, for basic um, everyday stuff. They're a Ramset product. Unfortunately, Ramset um, don't seem to stock them anymore, so you have to go to Mice 10 or somewhere, but we buy them in bulk, which is great. And again, just a 20mm um, jib screw. Um, they, I think they weighted to about 8 to 10 kilos each, um, which is, you know, there's not your average kind of thing is going to be less than that. These we call heart shape. Um, you often get these supplied with pictures that you buy from framers. And they obviously got the holes for the two pins. But don't forget that that hole in the centre is for putting a screw in. So if you're a bit worried about the weight of something, then just add a screw in the middle as well. And it just gives you a little bit of extra insurance. And obviously if you've got one of these on each side of a picture, that's going to give you a lot more strength. The only reason we don't really like these is that they, the, the tongue is quite wide and it comes in quite a long way and so lifting the picture off them can be quite hard. Sometimes you have to really give it a bit of a hoik, especially if you've got a pan head screw sticking out, closing up some of that gap. Um, picture hooks, I think sometimes people fall for the idea that the bigger the hook, the stronger the picture's going to be, but it's only ever going to be as strong as your jib is if, it's, if you haven't gone into timber or concrete, obviously. Um, so, you know, this size hook and this size hook are really just as strong because they've got the same pin going into jib. Um, yeah, these are the ones we're not quite so keen on. This has got that triangle point. Um, the sort of an intermediate step is these little orange plugs, plastic plugs you can drill in and they sort of expand behind the jib and give you a little bit more strength um, for something that's an average weight. And, and all the examples I'm giving, we're using one on each side. So rather than just a single fixer, you've got double the strength. Um, the other thing here is a wall anchor. We use a ram set wall anchor. This is a smaller one. You can get much bigger ones as well. And you see how it fans out behind the jib and clasps it. So we find those really good um, for sort of mirrors where we can't find timber anywhere that it needs to be. Um, those are sort of really good backup and you get it can get a really grunty bigger one as well. So you can just, they do sometimes supply like a setting gun for, for making them fan out, but you can just use a, a drill. Um, what else have I got here? I'll talk about weights in a minute, but um, when you've got a really heavy mirror, I mean mirrors are generally the scariest thing to hang, and if all else fails, I mean the beauty of a wooden framed object is that you, we end up hanging in reverse. You find the timber in the wall, put your hooks into it, nice and strong screws, 
and then you correspondingly move your D-rings up and down on the back of the picture to correspond to that height, <coughs> at the height you want your picture to be. So it can get a bit complicated. <laughs> you just have to start with the oxygen wall and work backwards to what's you can put on the picture at what height. Um, if that doesn't work, and it's often with landscape shaped things that you don't have a lot of play with where your timber is in the wall because you've only got this much width to play with, length to play with, um, you can use a mitre board. And I've just got a tiny sample here. So you fix, where you can see there, uh, like an angled board onto the wall into timber. So that screw would have to be into timber and across two studs. Um, for strength and then on the back of, oops, back of your picture you'll put this corresponding shaped angle and that will slot down into there and give you a really strong fix onto a wall. We do that a lot with really big heavy mirrors um, because you have to kind of <laughs> be able to sleep at night for a start um, but if your timber, we find if you have got a sarked house don't throw away the sarking if you renovate. They're wonderful things. We love sarking, but often these days when villas get renova um, renovated, they'll rip it out. But it does give you a lot more um, leeway for strength um, with hanging heavy things. Um, the thing with a mitre board, hopefully this will show you what I'm talking about. You see how a frame here has got a mitre joint, a 45 degree angled joint. If you put your mitre board across here and stop there, you're actually pulling that mitre joint apart. And I mean, obviously something this weight is fine. So if you're gonna use a mitre board, you have to go straddle both mitres at each end. So have your mitre board come right across here, and then you're using the lateral strength of the vertical to help support the, um, the piece. So, I mean, I know this is getting a bit complicated and technical, but um, you can buy, um, some framers sell little metal versions of a, a mitre board, but um, unless you straddle that mitre, you can end up just pulling it apart and your thing will fall off the wall anyway. Um, and would you tend just to put a mitre if it's a long piece at either end? You wouldn't do it the whole way? No, we do it a whole way across, whole yeah, way. because you have to straddle two studs. The longer the mitre board, you know, because they're usually 600 mil apart, mm. so the wider your mitre board, the more likely you are to be able to find two, two studs in the wall. Um, <laughs> drives us a bit mad. You used to be able to be fairly confident that, that mitres were, I mean, studs and nogs that were at 600 or 400 or whatever. But often we find they seem to be staggered and things now. And um, we had a client once who actually um, manufactured stud finders, but he gave up because he said they're too unreliable. And we've had some that are better than others, but at the end of the day, we, we don't entirely trust them. So we find the old knock, 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 and you know, then a little fine gold pin in there just to be common in a space. Obviously, it's going to be hidden behind the picture, but you know, that's the only way to be sure. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate that there's no foolproof way of. Um, and and on that note, actually, be aware that most galleries actually have plywood behind their walls. So what you see hung in a gallery that looks like it's into jib generally isn't. Auction houses the same, they'll have um, plywood behind. And, and it's something really worth considering if you're building or renovating at, or um, yeah, and got the chance put, and you've got a lot of heavy things, put plywood behind your walls. It's a bit more expensive obviously. Or get them to put extra framing in. Um, but it just gives you a lot more options if you've got the chance. And barring that, take photographs when the um, jibs off and keep a little, I mean, pain in the neck, but keep a little file of um, what rooms they are and what, what framing there is behind. I mean, often builders will happily put an extra timber framing in if you know you've got a heavy mirror to hang on a certain wall, but it can just save you a lot of difficulty later on. Um, we've had clients who've put plywood behind every wall in the house and um, it makes our lives very easy. <laughs> You wouldn't want any less than 12 mil. Um, 15, 18 is always good. We had a job yesterday actually for a 
company they've got a they're building a commercial um, what well, residential building but on a commercial scale and they've moved their display suite into a, just a portacom you know which is basically just um, styrofoam and um, a thin sheet of steel but because they had so many kitchen cabinets and units to hang they've put plywood behind every wall so we went in there and hung TVs and it was much easier so yeah just a nice way of giving yourself options um, the other question we get asked sometimes is hanging track and the benefits or otherwise of doing that. Um, aesthetically I don't love the look of them but I kind of get it if you've got a big collection and you like to move it around a bit or um, you don't want sort of holes if you've got big you know new brand new concrete walls and you don't want to be drilling into concrete a lot um, they can be good we've got a client who built from scratch and they had that sort of hid the hanging track between the top of the wall and um, some wooden slats in their ceiling so you can't actually see it but we can get a little slider up there and drag it along um, to hang their pictures on they like to move their art around a lot um, and because they've got concrete walls, the steel wire kind of just disappears and you don't actually see it. I don't love the look of steel wire on a white wall. It can be quite distracting, I think, but it's a, and it's a decision for, you know, your size of your collection, how much you like to move it around. Um, obviously, you need to be fixing into timber at the top if you're going to be hanging weights off it. Um, we find the, the purlon um, cord tends to stretch, so we tend to only really want to use the wire, steel wire, but it's, it's really just an aesthetic decision. Um, but some shops will um, put it in if they've got to put, put displays up that change around a lot. Um, the other option that you may want to consider if you've got something um, particularly valuable or that's hung in a public place, you're a bit worried about it, we can have a security fitting done. So what that tends to be is on an average size picture you'll have a, a bracket on the back, a um, little sort of rectangular bracket that's screwed into the back of the frame in the middle or on each side if it's a larger picture. And then on the wall um, in that same position you'll have a little um, what's called a T-screw that comes out and you just lock it into that bracket on the back. But the thing is you need a, a special spanner to unlock it. So you need to kind of think, well, if there's a fire or something, <laughs> I need to get my Goldie off the wall in a hurry. <laughs> you know, it um, has its sort of pros and cons, really. Hotels do it a lot. We hang a lot in hotels where if, if they don't security fit, everything walks, including the posters and the toilet, everything. So um, they tend to security fit everything they have. Um, we did a job just after the Sylvia Park Hoyt Cinema opened. They got um, the best film and best director kind of posters from every film since, I don't know, 1970 or something. And <laughs> they were fairly cynical about what might happen to those, so we security fitted all of those. But the trouble is the, the little spanners can disappear, people forget what they're for, um, especially in commercial situations where we do it sometimes, you know, you'll give it to the concierge or something and then they, you know, no one knows where it's gone. So, I mean, obviously we can supply more, but yeah, it, it, there is a downside to doing that as well. Um, the other thing, <laughs> with, oh, I was talking about the Emily Sedell lays and if you've got things with mitre boards, if you move house, take it with you. And the number of times people move house and they forget to take things like that off the wall and so we have to reinvent the wheel by having things remanufactured or whatever. So anything that's a bit unusual, if you're moving house, just take it with you, unscrew it, whatever. Um, oh, I forgot to say too, the, um, as far as the basic kind of things with screwdrivers, we loathe and detest the, um, what we call a spade, you know, a slot screwdriver. I'm sure all of you had thing where it slips all the time, there's not much. You can get very shallow slots for them to go into and they, they're quite dangerous to slip out of things. Our preference by far is a square drive um, screwdriver because it locks in pretty well. It's pretty stable and strong when you're turning. It doesn't slip out very easily. And those square drive, um, probably haven't got any with me now, but I can always try and find some afterwards, but the, obviously your screw has the corresponding square drive and um, they're, they're, we find them by far the most preferable um, screwdriver if we can. But Phillips is the other, you know, the cross-shaped one is the other most common one that you'll get on the back of a picture. Um, and they're okay, but they're just not as good, I don't think. Um, 
talking about heavy things, um, mirrors, as I say, are scary. We, we once had to go up to a rest home um, out of town where the handyman inside the rest home had hung a mirror above this lady's couch and it had fallen on her son while he was sitting on the couch. Luckily it was him, not her. Um, so they are something you want to be a little bit careful of. Um, you know, timber is the best solution if you can screw into a timber framing, but as a, for the reasons I've explained, it's not always as easy as you think. Um, if you've got concrete walls, that's great. Um, they pretty much, as long as the sheer strength of whatever screw you're putting in is, you know, your gauge of your screw is thick enough and you use a plug, you need to use a, um, a plug. I kind of brought one in here somewhere, but, oh, in here. Because if you just drill into concrete and then, um, screw a screw in, your, the concrete crumbles and blows and um, you're really in trouble. So you know, a plastic plug like that, drill a hole in your concrete, put that in and then you can screw into that and that gives you a nice stable kind of fixing. But obviously the weight of the piece will depend on how big the plug and how big the screw. Um, but concrete walls give you a lot of leeway for heavy things. Um, uh, oh, we do get situations where um, especially when people are renting a property or they've just renovated and they say, oh, I want you to hang this and this and this, but I don't want you to penetrate my walls. Um, and people use the 3M strips, you know, the sticky strips. We won't use them just because the number of clients we've had where they've fallen off the wall in the middle of the night, even if they're, you know, they've used double the amount that they think they should. Um, I mean, I'm sure they work very well in some very light things, but <coughs> we have to stand by what we use, so we won't recommend them. Um, we've once used um, industrial strength Velcro on very small pictures in a very big yacht, and they had you know, lovely teak walls that they obviously didn't want to get holes into, so we have used Velcro in that situation. Um, but in general, we don't see great results with that, so just be aware, and I would never recommend hanging anything with glass using those things, because if they come down, you've got a mess, or at least if it's just a light, you know, just a fun canvas or something, then it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, talked about that. Oh, yeah, and the other thing to be aware of is a lot of um, designer um, businesses will sell products like bookshelves and things that are designed for European homes that have masonry walls. We've had a situation where a um, client bought a bookshelf and it only had fixed, you know, two or three fixed points you could hang from that you couldn't change. And she wanted it hung above her daughter's bed. <laughs> And there was no timber in the walls at those particular points, and we couldn't alter where they were. So we just said we weren't prepared, happy to do it. Um, so just be aware when you buy anything that's a bit like that, if it's European, just check that the fixing points aren't um, unchangeable. And yeah, that if you're going to put anything heavy in books, are always a nightmare. Um, that that can be a risky thing to do. So there are ways around it, but it can be tr difficult. So um, that's something we come up against quite a bit. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of main technical info. I mean, I'm happy to answer questions a bit later on, as I say, I'm not the brains of the operation, but um, as far as kind of the aesthetics and creativity side of things, Pinterest is your friend. I mean, I'm a latecomer, I'm terrible with technology and, and um, just starting to explore these things myself, but all the images in this handout the girls have given you are from Pinterest. Um, and you type anything in, you know, you'll, you'll get a plethora of uh, assistance with ideas. And we find the world tends to be divided into people who love symmetry and straight lines and people who are more like a, um, particularly when it comes to collages, collages are some of the most difficult things we do in this, that they're time consuming, there's a lot of maths, but they can be the most effective, whether it's family photos or paintings. Um, and a lot of our clients, they like straight lines, they like things to, well we have the same top line, the bottom line, and other people like something what we call a swarm, so something that's kind of um, a much more um, loose arrangement but still has a balance to it. Um, 
the same with the framing, things like that. I think black and white photos can look really good if they have all the same sort of frame. They can look very effective, but they don't have to. We've done plenty of collages that are real mishmash of types of framing, colour, black and white, um, but they can all look great. So it's kind of figuring out what appeals to you and looking at Pinterest I think can give you a really idea, good idea of all magazines obviously, um, of what sort of person you are, what you like. Um, for example. Sorry, but before someone goes home, would you suggest that they may be laid out? Yeah. On the absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we do too, yeah. and it's, that's usually my job is to spend you know quite a while moving things around, playing with them, um, and then obviously the client can say yes, I like that. Photograph it. Um, some people actually I've seen online will actually make pa you know brown paper or newspaper cutouts of the different sizes, and masking use masking tape and move them around the wall um, to actually see it on the wall, but. Yeah, we tend to lay it out on the floor and obviously to try and find a bit of the floor that's the same sort of proportion as the wall you're going to be hanging it on because there's no point hanging out a massively long arrangement and then finding your wall's too short to fit it on. So um, it can be good to put a bit of masking tape on the floor when you've measured the wall you want it to go on and then lay it out and same with height and then sort of figure out what, what looks good. But yeah, that's, that's what we tend to do as well. And the way, because Murray's got the maths to do it, then we can measure though all those gaps between them and hang it from there, you know, start at one side and work across or whatever. It, if you're not mathematically <coughs> minded, it can be really tricky, um, especially if you want it to get a really precise outer border or something. So it, it, we, it is tricky for us as well, so it's not, um, it's not something that's sort of easy to do yourself. Um, understand and you'll see on your handout, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. Yep, and obviously we don't carry ma massive rolls of brown paper with us, but often what we'll do if something's really heavy and we can't stand there forever holding it or moving around endlessly, we'll just put, we use that um, light tech masking tape, the purple or the green usually, and so we'll just measure the, you know, the, the dimensions and put masking tape top and bottom side and side, and that gives a, you know, then we can all stand back and have a look and just sort of get a feel for the height and the proportion of the wall. And on that note, if you're thinking about buying something really big, do take the measurements home and check your wall um, fits it before because of the number of times that we'll deliver something oh my god it looks so much smaller in the gallery <laughs> and we have an occasion when you can't actually get it into the house so um, yeah it's something worth bearing in mind if you've got something huge scale I mean many a time we've hauled stuff up over balconies for that very reason and once you're inside you're okay what but do you recommend good point yes um, Often, not always, but often they'll come with a little, you know, they'll have two holes in the back and the raised um, bit and you'll have a bit of wire or something on there already. Um, I can't say that they're bulletproof, but I've never known of a failure as those sticky uh, round things. Yeah, I've never known one fail, but the thing with that is you, if you know you've got someone coming to hang those or you're doing it yourself, give it at least 24 hours to dry those um, gluey things that you stick on the back because they need to... Storing them, that's the thing they're just uh, old Chinese plates. Yeah. Um, and if you're in doubt, get the biggest yeah. one, you know, overdo the weight allowance um, if, you're, if they're really precious or anything. I've, as I say, we've used them a lot, but we usually get the clients to do that in advance because there's no point us showing up and no. when they haven't dried. No, so. no, no hangings or having to hang plates mm, on. Yeah, I say, often if, if they're like Fauna City plates and things that are made to hang, you know, they, they'll have the little holes with a bit of wire or something, or you can put your own wire through if you're confident with tying knots and things. Um, but if there's nothing on the back, yeah, I would um, buy those sticky plates. But yeah, and check the measurement. If you can't take it with you, you just check the measurement of the flat piece in the middle because you don't want it not the flat part. You don't want it going over the ridge because that'll affect the adhesion. Um, but yeah, give it a good amount of time to dry before you hang it. 
um, yeah, we do, and that's a good little what example there. It looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and obviously, if some because plates can be really heavy, most china plates aren't, but we get the odd um, Italian metallica thing, and they're very heavy. So you'll have to apply all those lessons about jib if you're if you're not confident about the weight, whether it needs a wall anchor or a plug or something like that, because obviously, like a mirror, you don't want them crashing down on you either. No. <laughs> it's not, not a great result. Um, so as far as these collage type things go, here's an example of the, the black and white. You know, all uniform framing, black and white photos, looks really crisp and clean and great, I think. And you see, we've got a client who has a lot of family photos and she always likes the outside edges to be straight. So that takes a bit of planning to kind of lay out on the floor and move things around. Because if, you, if you've got a variety of shapes and sizes, they don't, you know, it can take a bit of trying to make them fit with an outside edge the same. Here, someone's gone further other option because they've got a, a sort of piece of furniture underneath so they've gone a, got a straight bottom edge but they've let the top edge kind of just do what it wants to do and I think that looks equally effective. Um, the stairway one we often hang photo uh, family photo collages on stairways because it's I mean you can do whatever you like in your own house but often family photos it's good to put in a, not in a public space so much where you want your main art or whatever to be but in a private or semi-private space like a stairwell or an upstairs corridor um, so we do a lot of that and you can see it sort of quite nicely steps its way up um, so again that can be quite hard to, um, to plan and do on your own but um, looks really effective and again they've got the fairly similar frames going on there um, the corner thing I saw on Pinterest, we've never actually been asked to do one of those, but I think it looks quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, some of these coloured ones, you know, there's a real mishmash going on of styles and frames and colours, but I think it works. You know, it's um, both of those top ones. You haven't got symmetry, but you've got balance. and. I also believe there are kind of that, that front photo, for example, is obviously like an office situation or something, but there are kind of people who like their monochrome kind of simple, and there are people who love their riot of colour. And yeah, you know, we'll get a lot of old villas that have got you know, the, the advantage of a massive stud, so you can get that kind of floor to ceiling effect if that's your thing, and it can look great. And I think balance is kind of the issue there and it can take just as much planning to make that kind of arrangement but I think it can look really effective and you've got you know this one here you've got colour tonings that all kind of work nicely I mean not that I am into the whole match your curtains and your couch with your art type thing but um, I think that's a really effective little arrangement. Um, plates we've talked about I think that's all for this stage. I mean things like mantelpieces oh, I haven't talked about centre heights and things. The average Kiwi's eye height, and obviously there's a lot of variation, but the average Kiwi's eye height is 1,600 millimetres off the floor. So with an average picture, average size picture and an average size stud, we often will hang the middle of the art at that 1,600 point. So you're looking into the centre. You're not having to crane your neck up or crane your neck down to look into the middle of your art. But obviously with a villa with a huge three point something stud, that kind of centre can make things look like they're falling off the wall because they've got this massive space above them. So that, and or if you've got a mantelpiece or a piece of furniture and you've got to bump things up, you know, that's, and it's personal preference. We've had very short clients who like things really high and very tall clients who like things really short. You obviously have what you like in your own home, but when people don't know, you know, what they like, on average that 1600 centre can work for a lot of um, examples of the average sized picture. When you get something this big, obviously if, if I was looking into the middle of this picture it would be way up high and most houses can't accommodate that kind of height even if they had it. But um, yeah, you kind of, with the brown paper or having someone hold it up, you can just sort of gently move things up and down, put a bit of masking tape underneath when you've got a height and that gives you something to measure off without having to hold the picture there endlessly. Um, yeah, furniture, stud height, personal preference, light switches, often people have got a lot of art they need to use every wall they've got, they might, it drives us mental the way light switches get put in the middle of a wall, 
you might have to bump things up. Obviously, a smaller picture is better in that instance than a, than a bigger one. Um, some people are obsessed with lining things up with door frames or window frames. We don't see the point in that, partly because if you see that door over there, if you had all the tops of these paintings lined up with that door frame, it kind of looks like your ceiling is really low because you've got this other straight line way below your ceiling. So it might work for a picture of a certain size, but we often like just to break that line a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Um, I mean, again, you can have what you like in your own home, but we tend to not really understand that kind of obsession because it might work for a picture of a certain size, but obviously a little picture you're not going to have way up there. So we find if you've got on average that 1600 centre, then as you look around your room you're going to be looking more or less into the same sort of part of the painting, i.e. the middle. And it just means you're not kind of up and down, but every house is different and every you know, collection is different and may require <coughs> different um, centres, but yeah, that's a sort of general rule of thumb. Um, Oh, I mean, some of the more unusual things that we've talked about, we've done. Um, we had once had a, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the work of Rowan Whelans. He does the paint and sort of sands off so you see all the layers of Rosine's paint multicolored. He did a canoe that a client wanted hung horizontally rather than vertically in their <coughs> office. And um, they're very heavy because there are so many layers of paint on them. Um, and we had to get a marine cabinet maker in to make a bracket that followed the curve of the hull. Because um, you can't just set a curved thing into a flat wall. So that was a sort of challenge, but um, got there in the end. And luckily the client has moved that piece and they've taken the brackets off, so <laughs> we won't have to remake them. But um, yeah, some of the challenges, one of the more unusual pieces we did. Um, basically don't be afraid to sort of tell a professional what you like, but also be open to ideas. So, you know, we're very happy to do whatever you want in your own home, but if you're not very experienced or you've got doubts, then then kind of see what they've got to say about, you know, what, what they've done in other circuit, um, similar circumstances. Um, I don't know how I'm going for time. I've gone over, have I? Um, any questions I can uh, help with? Repairing holes that are in the back, do you have a we're not professional painters. I mean, we always ask if, because we do a lot of, and because we've got a big truck, so we transport art as well. And more and more of our workers, you know, people don't want to put their art collections on their furniture truck. Um, so we'll go and take it down, pack it, soft pack it, transport it. And we'll always ask, you know, should we take the hardware off the wall? And generally, why not? You know, you might as well save yourself money if you can reuse it. Um, we carry white filler with us, and I'm very happy to go around and fill holes, but I'm not a professional. So, you know, generally they'd need a sand and a touch up. Um, but yeah, if you're renting, obviously that can be an issue. Um, but yeah, concrete walls, not quite so easy, but you can get a grey filler um, or even wood fillers, coloured fillers, but it's more of an expertise that's not really mine. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I know that the session's about hanging out on walls, but on top of that, some of us might have sculptural pieces. Mm -hmm. And I'm always interested in um, understanding how a plinth ought to be, you know, for a particular piece, or, you know, do you have a view on um, placing some of those pieces? Um, it's less of what we do, just because people need us less. I mean, we'll, we'll often, um, we, we're delivering sculptures and we have created concrete pads outside and fixed things for external sculptures, things like that. Internally, it again probably depends on the proportions of your house, your stud heights, as to whether you want, you know, if it's a tall piece, you don't want to plinth up here and the, the bulk of the work. You probably, in a way, still want to be looking fairly directly at the main part of the sculpture so that, I mean, the girl at the gallery would be good to advise on this too because they sell a lot of it but um, yeah the proportions of the art compared to the proportions of the plinth to keep it within visual range is probably the same sort of thing as with paintings I think um, to try and if you've got a tall piece to have a lower plinth um, and there are people who specialize in making things that are um, custom um, with color and <coughs> size and shape which yeah we call on occasionally um, for 
freestanding sculptures, obviously you've got to be careful of, you know, if it's on carpet, um, stability is an issue. And securing plinths, things to plinths that are outside for security? Oh, if they're a sculpture that's designed to be outside, like a bronze or something, concrete, they'll often have a plate that can be bolted down. Um, you know, we're a bit, a little bit wary of having external heavy sculptures outside that are on bricks or not on completely flat ground, because unless they're really heavy, you know, they can tip. So concrete pads are the way to go to be bulletproof, and then you can bolt down into that concrete um, from the top. But presuming there's a plate on the sculpture, like Paul Dibbles, often you know they've got those. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Does anyone put a screw up there? No. Oh, if it's on the plate, that's what it's designed for. If it sticks out, if they haven't got a plate, then yeah, it might need a bit more thought. Um, and obviously, if they're a top-heavy piece, you know they're going to be more tippable than if they're bottom-heavy, and they're going to be fairly stable. So it really just depends on what sort of piece it is. But a gallery should be able to advise you as well if they're selling the piece. They should have experience on what's required if it's going internally or externally, and it pays to have that conversation before you get it home. Because if you need a concrete pad put down, it's good to have that done before you get it delivered. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Mm. Anything else? But yeah, hardware. There's a company called Larson Jewel that supplies hanging hardware. We obviously trade, so we can get it. I'm not sure if they sell. Do you know if they sell to the public in general, just as? I'm not sure if they do or not. Actually. But they've got a good website and they've got everything under the sun, pretty much for hanging. So if you want to have a good go, Larson Jewel. L A R S O N, U W J U H L. They're a big international company, so um, they cover most things. I mean, for mitre boards, wooden mitre boards, we tend to make our own because Murray's got all the tools <coughs> at home, being a former builder. <laughs> He's got all that kind of rip saws and things. Often they apply because you get that tensile strength, so um, yeah, there'll be 18 mil or something like that. But you, know, you can get all different sorts, yeah. As long as it's not kind of bendy, you know, you want a fairly strong bit of timber that's not bowed. Mm. <laughs> Any other else? questions? Mm. Thank you so much and thank you for coming today. I hope you enjoy our <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.